just uh, really wanted to share some things here today that we uh, that have worked for us as far as becoming a better tackling team. Um, every team and every staff's an evolution. Um, I, uh, I, I, I'll admit, I'm pretty new at this. Um, this is, this will be, I was going back, this is my 11th year coaching. Um, so I did two years uh, working just, you know, grunt work stuff, position group stuff, uh, charging things. Uh, at the high school I graduated, City High School down in Iowa City, Iowa. Um, and then I uh, went to UWL up here, uh, got on staff here, and just kicked me out. Oh, not really. Okay. So, um, came up, worked at Logan here with uh, Wally Genevico, who was, uh, they kind of built a team from, from scratch. Um, when he get, I started at Logan in 2007, and uh, when he got there in, I believe, 2003, 2004, Logan was a zero win team. Uh, he had three seniors when he showed up on his team, uh, playing in Division II football at that time. School of, at that time, 1135, um, we're not that anymore, but um, school of 1135 with three seniors. So you can imagine how that went. He had some rough years and, um, and uh, really took a lot from him. And Casey Noble's taken over there now, and um, a lot of those guys from Toma who had their, um, had their influence on how the program developed. And uh, just want to kind of share some of those things we did. Um, that I feel helped us become a, a better team overall, especially in the area of tackling. Uh, when I go to clinics, I'm not big on trying to copy everything everybody's doing, trying to find a couple things and see, okay, yeah, that fits into what our kids are, what our kids do, and, or maybe, uh, maybe you know, no, that doesn't really sound like this. <coughs> All right, trying to pick and choose and, and, and build our own thing. So uh, hopefully there's one or two drills here, one or two uh, practice approaches, things like that, that maybe you can incorporate, try out, and see if that, that it's your kids, okay? Because you guys, you know, a lot of teachers, you know your kids, and you have to be authentic to who you are. Um, I feel like we do a pretty good job of that. Um, I'll fly through this here real quick, if I can get into advance all of a sudden, no? So get me out, there we go. All right, so uh, we need to make a change. Uh, we were. We were a pretty, we were a pretty successful team in the conference, but we had a, we, we had a lot of, uh, lot of years where we just couldn't get a playoff win, save our life. Uh, we had three years in a row we played um, under the old playoff system where they paired you by geography. We were closer geographically to Marshfield than Central was, so we went to play them, and they were always pretty tough. Sometimes they're, you know, two best teams in Group Eight, and we played some battles. We just couldn't get over that hump to get a win, um, and then we went down uh, to Wadaki one year, and the Musso kid was there running back, and. That didn't end well. We get like 62 points. Couldn't tackle him to save our life. A lot of people had that problem that year, though. Um, but we, we, we kind of stopped after that season, reflected, and said, geez, we're going to be able to compete at that level. We're going to have to tackle better. That's just all there is to it. And uh, we're going to have to make some changes by the way we do things because if we didn't change it, we would just, we maybe have some success against the conference teams. Okay, we, we win some close games, and then we go in the playoffs and we get, we get our team kicked in again. We didn't want that anymore. Wanted to make sure we're progressing. We want to make sure we're uh, being able to competitive at that next level. So um, my arrows aren't working. So I'm going to click through a little time. All right. Uh, we were really having experience next season. We had to win out big playoffs, but then we kind of got over the hump. But went to Nominee, tackled really well in that game. Get some good players. Got a little playoff win. Got a home playoff game. Got that. Ran to Marshall again, level three. But um, and, and, and they they kind of their numbers really wore us down throughout that game. But we start, started to see some success. We started seeing the things that we were trying to do the last two years show up in games where kids were um, kids were backing down. They weren't backing down from really good athletes. Um, they, our, the technique stuff we were working with, uh, wrapping legs and squeezing knees, were showing up in games and we were tackling the kids in the open field, one-on-one -on -one situations that were allowing us a chance to reset when a team maybe made a big play. It was a 20-yard game, not a 50-yard not a touchdown. Okay, So um, that kind of told us, hey, maybe we're on to something here. Um, so we, we, we doubled down on that in practice. Um, we had a good year. We went on to the semis. Uh, lost tough one to the Monona Grove who won the state title in D3. Um, and then uh, we started to see this change in our kids. Because the, the young kids always take their direction from the old kids. And since the old kids have been through a few years of, hey, we're going to tackle practice. We're going to get after it. Um, the kids kind of embrace the new normal. That, that's something we're going to have to do if we're going to be successful. I don't want to say we're, we're, we're not beating our kids up and you know, bashing our heads in every day, but we have a period of our practice, usually near the beginning of our practice, where we are getting after it, and we have to. And 
we've tried, we, there, we really, until the playoffs roll around, that's, that's kind of what we do. Um, we, um, when we tried to back off that, it seems like that those were our worst teams we played. Um, our kids didn't seem to be ready to go out the gates. Um, for our kids, they need to have the repetition and practice in order to be successful. <coughs> it's just, just what we've come to find. So, um, when we set out to uh, improve our tackling about four or five years ago, we, uh, we, we tried to find something we could, we could consistently teach that would be easy to teach and easy to learn. We're not trying to get our kids to be perfect all the time, okay? And we wanted to really show stuff that showed up in a, a game. Uh, we, did, we didn't want to, um, we didn't want to, you know, depend on our ability to be in a five-yard one-on-one window where we're going to be able to square up, sink our hips, throw the hammers, grab the cloth. That doesn't happen very much. It just doesn't. Um, when that does happen, that's great technique. That's good stuff that will tackle people. But kids just don't get in those situations very often in games um, that, that we found anyway. Um, the, Everybody's probably seen the Seahawk tackling stuff that Pete Carroll did. It's the Dill through Huddle. I think everybody kind of gravitated towards that for that reason, right? Because it was practical. Um, and it gave sometimes undersized kids a chance. You know, if you have, let's say the running back's 200 pounds and you've got, we were talking, coaches were talking before I started here about um, you got the 140 pound corner who, boy, he's maybe a freshman or sophomore and he's trying to compete. Yeah. Billy, let's square up and throw the clubs and grab, grab cloth and see how that goes. It's not going to be very good for, for Billy. Um, so, um, you know, being able to uh, tackle low, wrap legs, um, and work some other kinds of technique that would uh, that help him be more successful, that maybe shows up more in the game than, than the traditional stuff, was something we really gravitated towards. Um, so, yeah, we, we just wanted to really move away from mechanical technique that. Uh, that really just didn't show up in games a lot. So, um, so like I like I described, we really um, we really emphasize this low tackle. Um, it's it's really used by everybody, but especially with DBs, especially in the open field, um, linebackers when they have an angle on a kid. Okay, so maybe not right in the hole on like an ISO play. You might be more in traditional straight ahead tackling stuff there. But uh, D line chasing a guy down the line. Okay, so chasing flat. They're all going to be on angles already, and uh, obviously for safety purposes, the head, the head needs to be up, but also you need to be able to see what you're hitting, um, just to be a proficient tackler. Uh, we really want the eyes to be through the thighs, okay? And that, and really trying to get the hips to sink down rather than bending over at the waist and looking at the ground. We want to really sink down and have the, shoot the eyes through the thighs. Um, if you have a wrestling background, it's going to be familiar because it's what they do. There's a reason why, you know, when wrestlers go take somebody down, they don't square up and shoot the clubs. They try to do it that way, right? Um, they're, 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 they're grabbing legs. So we want to shoot through and extend the legs. Feel that gives the kids a, a good opportunity to deliver um, quite a bit of force, um, even if you're not the, the biggest kid on the field. Um, so we want to remove the runner's base strength. And, uh, and then it also affects the bark, ball carrier's balance when you're able to wrap legs, squeeze the knees. Uh, you know, kids need confidence. and. Uh, Tell them, you know, hey, they might be big, but their kneecaps are all the same size. Okay? The kneecaps are all the same size. Wrap around the knees, squeeze them together, try to take the legs out, and uh, kids buy into that. Um, because we found that by teaching that, they are able to bring that big kid down sometimes. And, and under maybe your more traditional, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bad on the old traditional uh, form captain stuff that I think we've all seen. But under that model, some of those kids were just at a physics disadvantage, where they just didn't have enough, you know, force is mass times acceleration. When your M is real small, it doesn't matter sometimes. So um, hopefully, hopefully this, is, this gives them an opportunity to compete on a, on a level playing field. Um, one thing to point out, when we're driving on an angle, we're all to the path of the ball carrier, we don't want our kids just diving. That's not what I'm saying, okay? We're not out of control. Um, it's really sinking the hips, and it's very similar to, it's a wrestling takedown, it's a, it's a wrestling shot, it's a penetration type step, okay? Um, so we're, we're just lowering the aiming point, okay? We still do work um, a bit of it, it's definitely not it's emphasized, uh, chest tackle, you're more, you're more uh, standard uh, linebacker in the hole, meeting ball carrier out of stunt, um, all of a sudden you're, you're filling a gap and there he is and he's right there and we're closing space. Um, again, head up. This is just a higher aiming point. Try to get face mask in the armpit. 
um, to get as much surface on the ball carrier as possible. Um, use a variety of cues with that. Uh, biting the ball is one of them with the face mask. Um, trying to make sure that we're, we're squared up and uh, in a position where we can wrap up. We want to throw hammers, grab cloth. If we are tackling above the waist, we want to make sure we have a hold of something. Because there is going to be that situation where that kid's really, really strong <coughs> and that, that initial contact isn't taking them straight to their back. So we want to uh, keep our feet running, not stop our feet and become a, you know, someone's going to run over, run drive through, but keep the cloth and I said, give the cavalry a chance. Hopefully, if we've taught it right, we have other guys running with the football. Um, there's, there should be more people coming. Give them a chance. Hold them up. Um, that's, that's your last resort kind of situation. Right, obviously, we're not just trying to hang on and, and, uh, and wait. But if in that first contact, you're driving your legs, they're not going down, hopefully, if you, if you can keep them wrapped up, we, we're going to have some more help. And then that's when you have um, a lot of the good stuff we saw earlier today from a variety of coaches on uh, turnover circuit stuff where the second guy there can start punching the ball and ripping the wall out, which is something we definitely emphasize a lot. Um, so uh, also too, with some of the drills I'm gonna show, I'm gonna get through kind of our, our progression and, and show you why we do what we do and then I'm gonna show you what we do. And um, when I go through the drills and the diagrams and the drills, um, when we do a lot of those, the kids get good at transitioning. So you may start like this and start to lose it, and, but because we've done so much of the low tackling with the wrapping, le wrapping legs, the kids will slide down the legs, wrap, you know, wrap and roll, or wrap and take them to their, uh, to their side there. All right. This is kind of an adage we, we as coaches got together. The men must play, right? We, we had to create some conditions where most physically developed players contribute in our defense in a meaningful way. Um, the challenge we had when we looked at it is we had some kids that weren't maybe not the um, how do I say this next thing? Maybe weren't the, the smartest football players. They were, their football IQ wasn't super high, um, but they had the body. Okay, um, they they were they were physically developed. We had to find a way to get them on the field more than just uh, kickoff team. Okay, because that's an easy one. Cut them loose, run down, tackle the ball, stay in your lane. Okay, they can usually handle that, but maybe they couldn't handle our scheme. Our scheme's pretty pretty basic um, and simple for that reason. But um, you know, we wanted a way to get these guys in the field. We have had kids, and this is not an exaggeration, we had had kids that had zero varsity snaps their junior year. And this is a, I mean, we play a lot of sophomores and stuff. It's not like we just have these senior classes reloaded every single year or anything like that. Um, they didn't play any varsity snaps, not even on specials their junior year, and they've been major players their senior year. And that's not an exaggeration. One that I'm thinking of, he was the conference defensive player of the year. We, we kind of sat down as coaches and laughed afterwards. It's like, he didn't play a single varsity snap. Not a meaningful one anyway. He maybe played some mop up duty in the fourth quarter, things like that. But he was physically developed. We developed him throughout the year, gave him some confidence to use those tools. And by the time his senior year rolled around, he was ready to step up to the plate. And the confidence was a big piece of that that I'll, I'll be mentioning and talking about. Um, if we wouldn't have done attacking development and giving him those reps in practice as far as being able to execute those skills, he would have been the kid that, well, we can put him on kickoff team, and I guess that's all we can use him for, and it's kind of a shame. I think everybody's had that experience with a player where you look at him, geez, he should be able to help us more. <coughs> and we just got to gotta use an unlimited role, that's all I know how to do. Uh, we tried to get around that by approaching the problem differently. So um, this is the process we used. We identified who are our good taggers. Wrestlers are good taggers. I think that's pretty universal. Has been for us anyway. Um, they know how to take people off their feet. They um, and, and uh, they they have they have a lot of confidence because they they've done that. Um, kids that are already performing high levels, your best players, they tend to be some of your better tacklers. Okay, and the kids we perceive to be tough or hard nosed, the ones that aren't really afraid to tack, tend to be better tacklers. So how do we how do we go around? Um, you know, what, why are they good wrestlers? They have high they have high uh, high body repetition, working body leverage. Okay, they have high confidence in one-on-one -on -one situations. All right, so we're trying to develop some themes here. We're trying to develop two things that we found that are common to these groups of people that are awesome tacklers on our team, and then try to find a way to infuse that into the team. Maybe those guys don't fit those traditional groups. Okay, so um, high-level players, they, they typically receive a higher number of reps in practice. If you think about your team time, it, uh, everybody gets at the indie time. Um, we, we really tried to, it's tough. It's tough when you're preparing for a week to really make sure that you're um, 
you're giving everybody a lot of reps. As the season goes on, you do pare down. Your, your, your guys that are starting tend to get more reps. It's just kind of a reality of how that, that stuff works. Uh, maybe some of those developmental guys don't get stuff much more than any time. Um, so success breeds confidence there, and uh, they're successful already, so they they're have confidence in their ability to do that thing. And then I have these, this, this last category, um, and a few names come to mind in my head right now. Uh, tough kids. Kids that are, have experienced physical situations. They're either in other sports, and I say other contexts. It's a really nice way of saying that maybe they're, that they're, they're a little bit of our roughnecks. Okay? They're tough kids. Um, uh, they have higher confidence in their ability because, um, because they've, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're the kid, and you know, we, we preach character, but maybe they're the kid that uh, maybe gets a little bit of scraps here and there, okay, in middle school and, and early, in, uh, early in freshman year. I, there's a couple guys I'm thinking of right now that we really grab, we've given them a positive outlook for that, and really change your trajectory in life too, which is, which is the big positive there, what we're all after. Um, so how do we make them? We create opportunities for repetition practice, make it game-like, competitive, um, and create opportunities for positive reinforcement. Okay, so uh, we really, really want to make, make an effort to uh, reinforce positively in a very public fashion. When a kid, <coughs> young kid does something really, really well, we want him to hear it, we want the other young kids to hear it, we want the older kids to hear it, because that gives that kid credibility in the older kid's eyes, and it gives what he's doing credibility in the rest of his peers. So we want to make sure that we're um, finding Finding ways to praise him positively for um, you know sticking his nose in and yelling you know we see a drill we see him and wrap legs and and take a guy down and and we really we really want to build him up okay um, drills are opportunities okay drills are opportunities to do that and um, we uh, the one thing is uh, we, we also kind of have a belief that you know bumps and bruises that we give each other end up being worth it. If we don't attack on practice, we don't have these opportunities in practice to do this stuff, um, our, our kids aren't as confident on the field, and, and it kind of doesn't matter in, in the, on the football field anyway. Because we didn't get that opportunity to have those repetitions. All right? So getting into the stuff, the drills. This is what I hope you can take, hopefully, a few of these away. Um, I, uh, if, if any of these are unclear, um, I was telling Coach Shinsky, I don't have a, a bunch of fancy video. Uh, we just got Enzo on camera last year, guys. So. Um, <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of stuff as far as video, but I have a lot of stuff diagrammed up. Um, and uh, I'm more than willing to elaborate and explain and tell you how we use these things and how these have evolved for us. Um, we do like to start the practice with competitive drill that involves tag. Okay? It, we're, we try to get something that's going to involve all of our kids. Even the kids that it, the kid that is number five on the depth chart at D tackle, which is I used to coach D tackle, so I, I know what that means. Um, well, he's not fast enough to be a linebacker, and he's he's kind of a big kid, but you don't really know what to do with him. D tackle is kind of a catch-all for the defense. It seems like I don't know why that is. Yeah, there you go. So um, this gives a couple things. I think it gives us credibility as coaches when we do this. <coughs> you know, the kid that the kid that um, you know, we all have these kids that they, they, they do all the right things, they do all you ask, they're a little short on the ability end of things, um, and they have a tough time getting a lot of playing time. Even though they're doing everything you ask, they're awesome kids, they're working their tail off. You want to reward them and you find opportunities to do it, but they, you know, in their mind they want to be that guy in the rotation, they want to be a starter, and it's just probably not in the cards. Um, and every team has those guys. It gives us credibility because we're giving them opportunities and practice to show. And when, on the, on, on the occasion that one of these kids really starts to shine in those drills, now that's their, that's their vehicle. That's their vehicle to playing time. Um, and then if, they, if they're doing that drill a lot and they're making some errors where they're not able to successfully tackle, then it gives us credibility when we say, hey, uh, you know, there's a couple things that are, you really need to work on and we can go back, over, you know, go back over and reinforce the funny time and, you know what, tomorrow, you know, we did it on Tuesday, tomorrow, Wednesday, you're gonna get another opportunity. Okay, obviously on Thursdays before games we're backing off. And Mondays we're not as physical. Tuesday, Wednesday are good days. But um, I think that gives us credibility as coaches and um, it, it makes um, there, there's a sense of uh, equity there and opportunity. Uh, it's not just it's not they just get the any time and then the number one guys get all the reps and team and well coach never let me show what I was capable of doing. Okay? Kind of removes that that from the equation. All right. 
It also eliminates the get through practice mentality, which um, I don't know if any of you guys know Casey. Uh, he's a fiery guy. Uh, I, I consider myself to be high energy, and I'm not anywhere close. And if, if, he, if he senses that in practice, we're, one of these drills is coming out. It might be, we might be through any time, we're getting ready to start team, and it seems like it's always on a defensive day. I don't know why it is, because he runs the offense. But he senses that we're just trying to go through the motions and get through practice. All of a sudden, we're doing Jimmy drill. All of a sudden, we're doing Tennessee 7. I'll get to that in a second. But it, maybe we're doing it for five minutes. But it does tend to snap him out of it. And um, some of our kids actually really enjoy that. When that happens, it's, they get excited, which is what we want to see as coaches. We want to see kids get excited about, doing the, about playing football and being physical. Um, so we have. Uh, these three that we use for tone setters, I'll <coughs> um, go through one each of a couple variations on a few of them. Uh, I'm not going to save my best one for last. I'm going to put my best one first. This alley drill here. This is, I would say we use this, and I'll explain here. We use this every Tuesday and Thursday, or Tuesday and Wednesday this season. I don't think we missed it once. Um, even when we're a little banged up, okay? Unfortunately, when I'm diagramming this up, I couldn't drop something right down the middle. Imagine this is like half line. Okay, we're cutting half. Let's only focus on the right here. Okay, this is set up for offense here. But we've got a center, we've got our guard tackle, we've got a backfield, and we've got a, a half line defense set up there, right? Okay, we're running power over there. So right now we're about to do a live tackle situation, and we've got um, our fullbacks are getting the mix, our tailbacks are getting the mix. Quarterback's getting good skill work and handoff, things like that. We're getting snap exchange, okay? And, um, you know, we run power is a power concept, power gap concepts. We can vary based on what we're doing that week, or whether we have two fullbacks or one, or what, what are we doing? Um, but that's, that's a big majority of our offense. So it's high volume, okay? If you have a kid that is, maybe just he's an old lineman, he's not really a D lineman. Well, then guess what? He stays with the old lineman the whole time during this drill. If you get a guy that's just a D-line and he doesn't really play a line, okay? Then he's rotating in every other snap on the defensive side, okay? If, if you've got two-way players, which we have to have a lot of them, it's a necessity. Um, you know, I, I said, I played at City High School in Iowa City. We had about 1,700 kids. It's a little bigger school. We had a lot of two-way players because there's just a lot of situations where um, when the chips are down, you can't justify not having that kid on the field. Some people feel differently and tune up, and that's, that's great. And I've been on the I've been on the losing end of a losing team that just wore us down over the course of the whole whole game too. So I understand, but that's kind of a philosophy thing. So um, we want to get these kids in, and uh, we're just running power on this half. So we'll run a snap. We'll run power over here. Okay. The defense knows power is coming. Okay. The offense knows what they're running, and we've got maybe we've got well this is how we do it to be really efficient. We'll have a center standing back here. Okay. Guard, tackle, tight end, a back ready to reload the drill right away when we're done, okay? So we'll run one, okay? And then, while that's getting reloaded, we'll have the other side. We've got, our, we've got a couple of receivers out here. We've got our guy in the slot, our quarterback, with a center exchange there too, okay? He's gonna turn, he's gonna fire a bubble out there. We've got our, uh, our bubble concept on this side, and they're working on, our, our TVs are getting great work for open field stuff. Our receivers are getting great stock blocking. Great, and coming down cracking on the bubble for doing that that week. Um, and we can tailor this to, to whatever we're doing that week, okay? And sometimes it's power and it's bubble. Sometimes it's uh, toss and it's jet sweep. Sometimes it's, um, you know, we just have our, our, like our inside zone play or our outside zone play. And uh, we'll, if, we, if, we're running, if we're really working a counter, we, we can even have a guy that pops in over here and we work our counter action coming back, a little weak counter coming back on the other side. So we're, we're getting a high volume of repetition and we're, and we're tackling, okay? So the field's cut in half. Um, that's, that's really, on, on, a, on an offensive day, that's kind of how we're set up. On a defensive day, now, maybe we're putting some scout team stuff in there, okay? We're playing an option team. What do option teams like to do is stretch you out and run rocket toss, right? Okay? If you're not an option team, and you ever watch your scout team try to run a rocket toss, you'll know what I'm saying. They can't do it. So maybe you have rock, I have rocket toss four times in the script, and I'm lucky if one of them looks like a rocket toss. Okay, because they can't get that angle, that flat angle, that ball getting outside. That's all I'm talking about, the order of motion and kicking it out there. So 
Maybe on the defensive day, on one side, we're doing rocket toss, and the guy that's going to be the scout team quarterback is the guy whipping the rocket toss out there. So by the time we get to team, he's done it 15, 20 times. Okay? And sometimes the volume's higher or lower. It depends on how many kids are uh, healthy. Sometimes we're doing this for five minutes. Sometimes we're doing this for 10 or 15. All right? And um, we, uh, so we can use that opportunity to maybe work some things we don't see, give the scout team some high rep stuff um, that they can do to prepare. <laughs> and a lot of stuff is, is just comes down to one-on-one -on -one blocking and tackling. So um, there's the open field concepts on one side, usually a closed field concept or a tight concept on the other side. Okay? I, I, I believe that's the best drill. If you had to ask me what's the best drill you guys have in practice it, that it works on tackling, it's this one. Um, and uh, so um, is that kind of clear how I have that set up? Is there any questions with that one? Because, yeah. You're bringing them down, Brock. Do them all the way down. Yes. Yeah, yes. Cool. Yep. It'll be a quick whistle, but we're tackling. Yeah. Um, if we just try to butt up on that, um, sometimes bad habits. People, it's tough to do the low tackle stuff in thud. So we save that stuff for um, for our full tackle sessions. Like I said, the time component <coughs> isn't super high. Um, but I think we get a lot done in that short period of time. Um, sometimes by week seven or week eight, you know, you get those kids. Uh, we, we all have those, the seniors that, like I said, maybe don't don't play quite as much. They're, this is the thing they're looking forward to. They're an eight-hour math class. They can't wait till we come out here and run the end. Okay, because that's going to be, they know that they're going to be on the kickoff team that week. Roles are pretty well solidified. Then maybe they're a backup, they're a backup linebacker somewhere, but they know that they're getting some team reps, but this is, this is their time to, to get after it. And they look forward to practice. Their attitude's higher, so our team's attitude's higher. All right, so we don't have the, the, that mobiness that can kind of set in as the season. It's a long season, and as it goes on, we have all the kids engaged. Will well, this replace a full, a full live team session? Is, is the team then sometimes maybe a little more, more thud because you've got your life? Well, we are, we're, we're, when we get into the team, we are definitely more thud. We're not, in, in a full team where we're, we're trying to teach full fits and stuff, that's the emphasis when we get into the team later on. We're probably thudding more in team. Our tackling happens within the drills. And um, one thing that we, we have to do a better job of, because maybe we'll have a coach running, you know, coach behind the offense, coach behind the offense on each side, and defense each side, try to get as many of your systems as possible. Finding a kid to point out and, and you know make sure that um, make sure that we're we're recognizing them all right, when they when they do good things in these drills. Um, we also try to make sure that nobody goes two times in a row. The other thing that you'll you'll, you'll see a little bit, and it's good good info to know early on, is who steps in, and who doesn't. Okay, they're not going to step in in this drill. They're not going to step in and, uh, and and run your power here. Good luck having them run the power play against a really good team on Friday because they're not going to do it there either. You might put them out there, but they're not. They're, if they don't want to be in there and they don't want to do that, then you got to find another role for them because they're, they're just not going to help you on Friday. So, um, for a kid that maybe has a tough time memorizing plays, can't remember them, this is pretty. This is pretty. Uh, this is pretty user friendly. Okay, I'm just. I'm a fullback. I watched what the fullback just did. He just did the same thing every single time. Okay, so now if I'm, I'm the kid that, boy, I've tried to figure out what right, you know, in our offense, what right and left means, and it's taken me a year to figure that out, and I have no idea when we're talking and we're, we're calling 36 power, what, what, what does that mean? Okay, well now, that piece of the equation, that inhibition to finding out whether that kid can tackle or not is removed, because he's just got to watch what the fullback's doing and go do it. Or he's got to watch what the linebacker's doing and go do it. Okay, so that's... I, I feel strongly that that's one of our that that's, that's our best drill. Coach, Here's that drill. Do you just rotate the offensive guys out then, or do you? We do both. Both. Yep. So no limited <laughs> position, and, and this this you might have to tweak this depending on the number of the roster. Um, but we say that all positions are reloaded after every time, and they can go every other, and that happens a lot. But um, we don't want the same guy taking all the mic reps. We take a mic rep, the number two mic gets in. If we got a number three mic that week, maybe he can get in there and try to try to work it. Um, and usually at some positions there's more rotation than others. Um, and, and we do encourage guys that if, if they are a starter on one side of the ball, make sure they get most of the reps on one side. Um, but this is great for open field blocking too. Uh, I believe the offensive line too. You know, our players aren't too platoon, neither are our coaches. So um, as far as getting a, um, a tackle to come downhill and block somebody in space or something like that, 
This is a good drill too. And Demon's kind of knows it's coming, so. A um, little bit, little bit of uh, just for um, reference, Coach, how many guys do you have on your practice squad, your, your varsity team? Full varsity roster. Uh, let's see. We are, it's not It's not huge. Um, for a school our size, it's not huge. We are about 50. Sophomores and seniors. Sophomores and seniors. Yeah, freshmen seven. So I think program wide, we had about 70. So we have about 20 or 72, so 22 freshmen. It's about 50. Um, that, that, that changes from year to year quite a bit. Um, but I'd say that's a pretty good average, too, for our years. We've had a couple years where we had more and years where we had less. If we have less, we just don't do this for as long um, if we get, the, we get the work done in a short period of time. You modify this. Actually, we worked the other direction. This is where the drill started this way, and then we, uh, we applied it to full team. Um, this, this, this alley drill, we put, we put like pennies down. We didn't like cones because they're sitting there. Um, bags, you can trip over two. You can use bags if you want to. Um, and you have like a, a half field situation or between the hash situation. Our practice field isn't close to regulation width at all, so uh, our, we don't really use the lines around the field that much for stuff like this. Um, but this kind of works, this is the same kind of concept, but it's not, it's not in the context of running any kind of offensive play. Okay, this, is tr this is a true drill. That's all it is. Okay? Um, running back starts with the ball, could be a wide receiver too. We got a fullback there, we've got some sort of skill position, um, skill position or tight end here on either side, blocking a, some sort of D end or linebacker. We've got a free linebacker, two receivers that are about 10 yards downfield across from two DBs, okay? They're working on staying engaged. Um, the, run, the ball carrier has to stay within, I'm just gonna use the hashes here as kind of our boundary. There is a boundary to find. And um, they can go right or left, and they're encouraged to, within the constraints of the drill, cut, make, make some moves, okay? Um, you find some really good open field ball carriers here in this. Um, we see some kids really thriving this, and then we turn around and they're running jet ski for us. You can also find out, um, who can be a safety. Um, safety stand out in this a lot because they have to cut everything. Usually get off somebody that's in their face, come downhill and make a tackle in the open field. And we see guys just starting to wrap legs up and, and put pretty good ball carriers down when we're, we gotta find a spot for that kid because he can do it. And they found kids that are not, um, that maybe were not on our radar as much because they were uncomfortable with coverage, they were uncomfortable, things like that. We can find a kid that can tackle like that, we'll make the coverage. Okay, um, we uh, boy, I mean, we would kill for uh, you know a, a really uh, a true safety last year. I had a linebacker playing back there most of the year, so um, you know, we were a pretty good tackle team actually last year. The problem was is if you could run away from us, we couldn't catch you. So um, you're, you know that's something that I think hopefully will be better next year, and uh, we can find some more. We have some young guys that kind of really started showing themselves in the drill like this that I think that we'll be ready to step up and fill those roles. <clears throat> okay, so this one, I, yeah, I didn't come up with this name. I don't know why it's called Jimmy Drill. Um, I'm blaming it on Toma. I'm blaming it on Malloy Casey. I think they took it from Toma and they called it Jimmy Drill Toma, so it's Jimmy Drill Logan. Um, we've got essentially lanes, okay? We'll have bags down, um, dividing each lanes. Or you can just throw a jersey down, like a penny down if you want to. You don't want to have the bags there, that works fine. Okay, it's five offensive linemen, five defensive linemen. This is where I really find you get the D linemen that can play against the run. Who can get off a block and make a tackle? Who can, while being blocked, still make a tackle? Who can just be a disruptive pain in the ass? You know, will we'll, uh, the coach will stand behind over here and he'll tell the running back, he'll, he'll, he'll designate which, which one of these lanes, okay? And think American Gladiator, right? You got all these lanes, okay? He tells him right here. Okay, and the running back's going right there. The whole line can see that, defense can't. Okay, and if we're, if we're running right here, and this D lineman's up against a pretty decent old lineman, and he's making a tackle, I gotta find a spot for that kid. Because he just scraped flat and took some of his legs out and uh, wrapped them up and made a play, and kids are getting excited. Um, you get to find guys that can play laterally really, really well. And then also guys that um, play with good pad level and don't get driven. Okay, if all of a sudden, when these guys get blown off the ball, and we kind of look like, well, we better coach him up a little bit if we're going to use this guy because he can't hang in there against a one-on-one block very well. Um, 
so, so much stuff as that alley drill for the running backs by receivers. Uh, they're about 10 yards back here with a safety type player or with a linebacker type player. Um, and uh, they're blocking them. They got to rip off. Um, and uh, there's also, this is, once they get through those shoots, they have a similar uh, width. They have about, about 15 yards wide to work with. Um, and we'll, sometimes we play around with that. We want it to be a little wider once they get through. We see a little more of a field stuff we can. We want to tighten it down a little bit. We do that too. Okay? Um, it's really good for the one-on-one -on -one position you guys. If I want to find out which guy is the best D lineman I got, okay? Or if, if I'm trying to figure out who the last D lineman is that's going to be starting, I'll have a guy in here, and I guess the lineman I know pretty good, and oh, okay, beat him. Next time around, I tell him this other D lineman to go over here. I'm, I'm going to see, I'm going to see the same guy in the same matchup in the same situation, and we can just kind of play around. Um, we videotape this, and so in my head, I'm like, hey, I'm going to grab this video, and we're going to show this drill. I apologize. Uh, we cleared it off for storage. It wasn't there. So I tried to go back and see if I could unclear it, and apparently it was too old and I couldn't do that. So um, I apologize for that. I don't have uh, some of the video um, that I wanted to have. I, I knew we had a video of Jimmy Drill, and that'll be a good one because you get to see, you get to see um, those one on one matchups happening, and then the linebackers kind of coming down, scraping through, the safety's coming down, scraping through, making tackles. Um, last one here for our tone setting drills is our Tennessee 7. Um, <laughs> this is one, and maybe this is, has anybody ever heard of this drill? Tennessee 7 at all? Okay. Um, it was brand new to me when I came across, and I thought it was cool. All right, it's really, it's a very competitive drill, okay? We've got um, 10 yards. The offense has four plays to get, okay? And on this one, the offensive defense stays the same for all four plays, then we get brand new guys in everywhere for the next series, okay? We do them by series. And uh, we make sure the players are back so they rolled up on, but we also like our other players to be on the side, hooping and hollering, making sure that they're, uh, they're getting guys jacked, okay? Um, center, two offensive linemen, they don't have to be guards. Helps if it's really a center, though. Otherwise, the, the, the ball hits up on the ground a lot. Um, got our quarterback and a running back. We got two D linemen and uh, a linebacker or a DB. Okay, sometimes the linebackers put their hand down and down here. That's not the worst thing in the world, especially if you've got an old lineman you want to find out because you can be able to handle a faster D lineman. Put, put a good athletic linebacker down on the three point and have him try to swim or something. Um, they get four plays. Um, kids get really creative with this, which is what we like to see. They get creative using football, which is awesome when kids can start to take some ownership. Um, they'll start to trap people. You know, that's real cool. Like all of a sudden, we're, we're sitting down here and and if they like huddle up, they huddle up real quick, they give a snap count, turn around, they, they, usually it's either we're going right or going left. But all of a sudden now they're calling our they're calling our short track out to each side and the, the, this, D, this D line is going upfield, he's getting kicked out, the other guy's going down the linebacker, all of a sudden they're off to the races and the guys are hooping and hollering, he was gonna play that we run. Can't get better than that, right? Um, we're not an option team, but uh, we have a quarterback, he's like he, he, he worked a little bit of scout team with he's like, is hey coach? we got to run some midline outs, can't we? Yeah, and of course the quarterback's pulling and run. The quarterback never runs at this drill, really. So he wanted the opportunity to keep the ball himself. And sure enough, he, the, 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 the O-lineman went down the second level, and the quarterback, the quarterbacks uh, pulled it out, and the deep lineman tackled the running back, and the quarterback's running around, just right around the corner, in a pretty tight window there, scores on the first play, and he's, he's thinking he's, uh, you know, had the greatest idea in the history of football. So, um, that, that, that's kind of cool, all right? Do you, do you narrow the width of that? Yes, yes. I, and, and I apologize for the way I diagrammed it here. Um, it is not, it is not hash to hash. This is, this is about a, um, it, it's about a 15 yard, 10 yard, 10 yards for this, okay? 10 yard width, okay? So it's pretty tight. We have our players back at about 15, so they're not sitting right on the edge. Otherwise, somebody gets tackled and goes out of bounds and they can't back up and someone's turning an ankle or something. So, um, and this is a you know, nice competitive thing, especially early when we finally get pads on, finally get to do some of those things and, and figure out who, uh, who wants to tackle. Um, and then, uh, in order to try to make sure the young kids aren't getting overwhelmed with something like this, we'll, we'll do it for a few, little bit, and then we'll say, hey, seniors out. This is seniors' is last one. They'll, they'll be fighting to make sure they're in that last go, and then they'll get out, and then it's down with just juniors and sophomores. Okay? And then after a few, juniors are out. 
Now it's just sophomores. And um, you can see kind of who those young kids are that really want to step in, things like that. Um, within our funding groups, okay, tactical things we do. Some of these are, are kind of, um, they're universal, I think. Okay, um, I think a lot of a lot of you do some form of this drill. Okay, um, for I'll go through each one of these um, individually here. The for the uh, D line, we do a flat chase drill a lot. Okay, um, for the work on one side, we work our double teams and we work a chase down flat down the line. Um, and then uh, we work an Oklahoma drill that's just good for uh, one on one competition. So for flat chase. Okay, we tend to fit the opponent. Again, this is condensed. This is not hash to hash. Okay, um, we can work versus a power scheme or a zone scheme with cutbacks, depending on what we're going to see that week. Um, I like to make sure we marry up our drills to what we're going to try to turn around and stop. Um, so this is drawn up against the power scheme. Okay, we'll have uh, with a tight end, a full full line and a pole. Okay. We'll have both our down linemen here. We operate out of a, a well, it's a it's a 33 base. It can look different depending on where our personnel is at and what, um, who we have, where, and what's available. But generally, we're in a zero and two fours. Um, they, those guys do move, um, but again, we're not we're not overly complicated because we don't want we don't want the um, the thinking to take over here from from the football play. Um, our two guys we work in their their funny stuff that we work with splitting double teams um, or getting down if they're if they're getting driven, okay. And their um, and the guy on the backside who um, if we have a slant on or something like that is going to get in that back and pocket of the guard, get flat down the line so he's not getting upfield, okay. Try not to have these guys ever get upfield and remove themselves from play. We don't want to ever see that. If we see one of these down three guys operating more than two yards, three yards in the backfield. Um, I mean, on a pass rush, obviously, you got to get, get going, but um, any kind of run play, how many times have we seen this where maybe, we'll call a slant, it's, we're, we're slant strong or something like that, they're running power right into the teeth of it, and this guy should have a free run in the backfield, at least be able to make it bounce wide if it goes up here, and play goes right by him. Um, trying to get that, you know, they don't believe it until it happens. We want to see them make the play, and as soon as they go, Flat make the play, then it's then it's we're reinforcing that reinforcement. We're, so hopefully the other guys that are standing over here or that are getting ready to do the drill see that we got really excited about this kid doing it correctly, and hopefully they try to copy that. Um, we rotate linemen through on that one. Um, this is obviously more D line drill. Um, the Oklahoma when we run, everybody has a version of this, I think. Okay, uh, we start the linebacker. On their back, okay. This is kind of for the it's D line and linebackers together when we do this. Uh, we we'll start the ball carrier on their back for the ball. Um, these two guys are getting three point. It gives them just a little bit of delay time, so the, there's so there's um, the opportunity for the, we actually see the one on one matchup between the O lineman and the D lineman. Um, pretty narrow uh, space. We'll put we'll put the finnies down either side on this something like this. We're not going to obviously have like three guys working at once. We're going to have um, multiple. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of set these up, space these out so they're not running into each other. We'll have another one here and another one here. We do about five or six of them at once. Get the kids rotated through. Have them uh, hopefully not having too much where you have an, uh, a, a big, really big kid carrying the ball. Uh, I, I don't know why. It just it slows everything down and it's not going to happen too much. Uh, I don't really want if we've got a kid that's 270 pounds. Or, as much as he loves the idea of him doing this, I don't really want him being that running back too often. Um, the last thing I would want is uh, maybe one of our undersized linebackers to kind of see the back So, um, my, what time? 1.30 here, I got a little time, right? Yeah. Okay, I just turned that clap the next door, so. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, this one's also something that, for linebackers, that uh, I think is pretty, um, Pretty common, okay? Just a no regular 45 degree angle tackle for us that got a lot of good stuff done, but it wasn't um, it wasn't enough, okay? We want we want the uh, we want the guy that's making the tackle, okay? If he has an opportunity, we'll intentionally put that ball into your arm sometimes, okay? We'll tell the guy put the ball in your arm, and he knows that that kind of consider that to be 
Uh, one of those opportunities doesn't happen all the time. Most of the time, running backs are pretty good about putting that outside arm. If they're going to make the tackle and that thing's there, get it. Okay? And we want to make the tackle first, but if we have that opportunity to change the game with a turnover, we can be plus two in turnovers, we're going to win most games. So, um, you know, we'll do that and we'll have him actually pop it loose. We'll have a, um, another guy, it could be a linebacker, could be a safety, it's more likely to be a DB. We're bringing them down and we'll get run fits. Um, we'll have him scoop and score it, okay? Just keep that happy. Um, it's something I think we all do to some extent, uh, but it's just something we did and we kind of added to the drill, the made the drill, I think a little bit more uh, valuable. We're able to work more than one thing. Um, if we have him in the outside arm and he's just tackling him, we'll just have the coach kick it out there, you know, and they got to work on scooping it up and um, we tell them you get one, one, one try. If you're, if you're kicking it, if it's, if it's rattling around, fall on it. But if you try to scoop it, you scoop it clean, great. If you don't get it the first time, get on it. And some of those uh, young ladies coach, they didn't have that option. They, they had to get on it right away. So I don't want to try to see them doing this stuff. Okay, for DBs. <clears throat> we have our edge drill. Okay. And uh, we're working. We're just going to get this guy the ball out of here. Okay, and we don't typically work this mirrored where we're running both at the same time, although when I was drawing it up, I thought, well, maybe we should be, just for a higher level of reps. Usually we work one at a time. Um, we'll work in both directions. But um, we'll have these guys doing like a crack replace kind of thing. So we'll have the out number one receiver coming down and cracking. This guy's got to open his mouth and yell crack to the guy inside so he doesn't get annihilated. And then he's got to become, he's got to become the lever, okay? If they're going to crack our leverage player, we got to replace him with a leverage player. Okay, so that's that's kind of how we do that. Um, also, the safety then has an opportunity to run from depth here and make some open field tackle situations if um, the other guy doesn't get off of his block. Um, there there are two for two here, so a lot of times if this guy is an athlete, which most time he is, he'll be able to not get tackled by this first level. Okay, if these guys are animals, then maybe they're going to defeat the block and they're going to make a tackle, and that's great. We get excited. But uh, on the other side. Just working to stalk instead of a crack, okay? Um, and we give that guy the freedom here within this drill to cut it between them or bounce it out and around, wherever the space is at, and make it that safety just operate in space. Um, I think it's the toughest thing to do for a high school kid um, to come from depth, take a good angle, and not not overplay it, but not be you know not do the uh, the dancing bear where you don't really do anything. Okay, because then the guys just make a cut and run around you. Try to find a, a medium there where they're not overplaying it, they're not doing the dancing bear where they don't uh, they don't make it tag. Okay, next DB thing we did, um, next thing we did here, the DBs, our funnel squeeze stuff. This is when we're working our coverage. Um, we have a variety of coverage, not so much if you watched this play last year at all. Um, we didn't have a variety of coverage because we couldn't. Um, but we, uh, we we have some coverages that have a corner force or a cloud force, okay? With that kind of relationship. Other other kinds where we have sky force for safety, um, and we're just working on um, the, uh, the the same kind of skill set as the crack the place um, or the or the stock uh, tackle. But we're trying to make them work um, in space without those blockers, where it's just. Now we're now we've taken the, the two receivers blocking out of the equation, and now we're just getting down to ball carrier, tackler, get a good angle. There's occasionally there's some kids that um, if they're just not where they need to be as far as getting off blocks, they never get to work this piece of it because they're working on getting off the block all the time. Um, we want to actually see where they do this, and then if we can do this, we just got to work a little harder to get, get them off blocks. Um, uh, a way to modify this drill here too is we can. We kind of set the boundaries really tight, like it's close to a sideline, trying to get them to use that sideline to help them out a little bit. Um, so maybe the guy only has a one way to go. He can only go one way, so you're going to make sure you put that head on the, on the side he can get to so you can kind of try to cut him off and use that sideline to help out. Um, I got one more drill here, and then please, if you have questions, just stop me and ask. Um, in my head, this all makes sense as we do it. I want to make sure that I'm not, I'm not missing something here. Um, this is a good special team. Um, you can do it without, with pads and without pads. Um, it's more of an agility drill. 
without pads. But it can be more tackling real with. Okay? It's inside and front. It's the, the, the guidelines for these two guys are exactly what that name says. You gotta keep this guy inside and in front of you. Okay? So when we do without pads, we go on pad. Okay, this ball carrier come up and they're gonna they're, they're, these guys are when the drill starts are going to come down and try to converge, keeping him inside and in front. When we're unpadded, we tell the guy with ball carrier to work quickly side to side. Okay, and maybe more than once, in a way that wouldn't necessarily be like you would in a game. You wouldn't have a guy going back and forth, not be main ground. But he may come up, quick, try to put a move on a guy, go right, come back, try to shake him, come back left, and these guys gotta work their hips side to side. Really good for kickoff and punt coverage, I think. Um, I like it. We, we do this every Thursday, and usually, usually one other time in the week at some point when we're working um, our coverage stuff. Um, if we have guys that aren't helping us kick PATs and things like that, um, rather than just have them do the, you know, where they're just going to throw the ball around the entire time, we get a group of them over to do this stuff. So um, that's a really good one for unpadded, I think, for agility. Um, and the kids say that, you know, they really have to break down and use their, use their feet. Um, if we're padded, then we're just not going to do the side to side part. Okay? We're just not going to do the back and forth, um, you know, kind of over repping the side to side. We're going to tell the guy carrying the ball that you go up, you can make one move, and then go. And they got to make the tackle. So then you have two guys make the tackle. They're going to try to keep them inside in the front. Okay? And the beauty in this is that you got a second guy there. If he doesn't go down right away, he gets to work that arms, <coughs> ripping the ball out, stuff, because he's the second guy to the party. Okay? So um, we. Uh, and we'll get multiple once we set up, okay? Um, we'll get you know, a group going over here, a group going over here. Usually, usually we have two groups, we have coaches on each, and we can rotate them around and reload them. Uh, it's a good conditioner, too. I mean, they're, they're moving in space. Um, kids, get, kids get breathing pretty hard getting to work uh, their conditioning and kind of the game type situation. So far, you haven't started off rock. Defenders, anywhere. About 50, 10 to 15. Yeah, 10 to 15. We're not, we're not trying to have them run the whole, like, this is they would on a kickoff. Yeah. This is trying to get them out of that. They're coming down their lanes. Here comes the ball carrier. I'm breaking down, and I'm uh, and I'm gonna try to keep it inside and in front of me. And most of the time, if you do that, you won't miss the ten. Um, you know, if he's a really good athlete, or maybe the kid isn't really good at wrapping up, they might struggle. But um, at least gives them a chance. Um, I here's the one caution. This because I remember this from last year. Uh, kicking down and kind of got his case because he, was, he wasn't closing the space at all. They go, Coach, he's inside in front of me. You're in like straight down here. Straight. Well, he is inside in front of him. Yeah. But there's a 10-yard there's a, there's a space between the two that he could have easily run through. So we want them to kind of squeeze it down. Technically, the kid was right. He was first. Point. Yeah, hey, he's inside in front of me. Well, yeah, you can run to the sideline and be inside the running technically. So um, we want to kind of really close that space down. Um, this is good for kickoff coverage. If you guys ever have, uh, you know, we get to your 10 guys going down, usually your kicker's a safety, unless he's one of your better athletes, then you have somebody else do it. But, but we, um, we always had a problem with the back end of the kickoff coverage, right? They would run past the play. They would run past it. And then, then what do you do when you run past it? So here comes the ball, I run past it. Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna chase him down. You're never gonna catch him. They have a guy back there returning the ball, and you do this, you're never getting there. So trying to get them to close that gap and stay in a, in a range where they actually have a chance to make an attack. Um, trying to squeeze that down a little bit. Um, as far as drills, that's what I have. I hope that one or two of them sounded interesting to give it a shot. Again, you know, you know your kids, take what, take what you know, sounds like it works for them, try it out, modify it, tweak it. Um, a few of these were just ones we said, well, how about we do this? We had a coach say, uh, for that alley drill, they were doing just the skill kids, and uh, they said, well, why don't we just run some of our offensive plays in and do it? And I'm, I'm working with the O-line at the time, and I'm, we're off doing the, you know, the thing where the O-line needed to go on a nature hike and go do their own thing down there. <laughs> and I said, and you know, these guys are having a blast down here. They're hooping and hollering, they're screaming, and, and then now I get the, well, maybe I'm a tight end, maybe I can do that. You know, that kind of stuff. It's like, well, we want to get these kids involved. So let's find a way to get them involved that doesn't screw up the other stuff they're trying to work 
by splitting into an open field concept on one side of that alley drill, doing the bubble stuff, the all linemen aren't involved in that. So they don't have to mess that up for the DBs and things like that. But they get to work some of their reps on the other side. We'll, we'll flip it. So we're not just running the power of the right the whole time. We'll flip, flip flop it and, uh, and mix it around. But hopefully you can find something like that that works for you guys. So any questions at all? I hope I explained things thoroughly enough with the stuff that I, that I have. Yeah, yeah. Have, have you seen a ton of injuries at practice? I'm assuming not because you do it. In right, no. So. Um, okay, I, I would say the little things we have, like occasionally, I mean, just the stuff that happens, um, fingers and things like that occasionally. Um, kid turns an ankle, and that's that's the balance to strike. That's the that's the tough part. Um, you know, we have, we, we, we do this before we, uh, played a conference game this year, and all of a sudden our starting linebacker drills his ankle on, on Wednesday when we were doing this, and uh, so I think, oh, geez, uh, he was able to kind of run it out, and he was definitely wasn't 100%. But um, yeah, did that injury, did that injury uh, make him less than 100% with the game on Friday? Yes. I guess this is for our kids, and this may not be, this may not be everybody's, so I mean, you got to kind of assess it your own way. We thought the, the net positive of developing all of our kids over a period, a long period of time, outweighed the risk of turning an ankle. We didn't see. I mean, we're not just we're not just teeing off, smashing into people. It's real tough for those guys in those kind of spaces to really get a full head of steam and get stuff going. Um, but um, yeah, I I wouldn't say any more injuries than what we were otherwise doing with other stuff. Um, if we were just doing the isolated tackling drills in our fundies where we were actually tackling, um, I think we had just the, about the same amount. Um, so we had a few kids that, yeah, they got a little nicked up, but they, they love the drills so much they're trying to get back in them. And we actually had to tell them, hey, no, for today, you're, you're out for today. You know, maybe they did something to his pinky and it's, it's kind of swelling up. It's like, hey, you're done. But, no, I'll tape it. No, okay. And how often do I get to say that to a kid? Yes, he's got, he's got to back it off. Um, so I, I wouldn't say we saw it. Yeah. Drill tactic question. With that Jimmy drill. Yep. You've got your five and your five. I mean, let me let me pull back here. Yeah, with the two backers that are up there, I thought I saw that you had two blockers mm -hmm. in front of them. Are you up? How far I, they, away they're, are they're, you? They're, they're ten going? yards. They're, they're ten. ten. Okay, yeah. I was yeah. going to say. They're ten. Yes, are you? Yeah, that, that'd, that'd be a lot of traffic. No, that, that, that kid rolls up and back. Right, yeah, right, right, right. That's a good point. Okay. Because this is really a linebacker or a DB. Um, we, and we've actually, we modified it too, where we're sometimes we won't put the guy there and we'll make him more just linebackers. Sure. That's something we can definitely do. Sure. <coughs> we tell these guys here, that's a good point. We tell these uh, offensive guys that they're, they're supposed to stalk with them, but we don't want you retreating back. So if you're if you're getting driven, they beat you. Okay? Because we, we don't want this guy but it's back to the action, backing up into the play. Um, and that doesn't happen very much. 10 yards away is pretty safe. Because um, what's going to happen is this guy's going to pick a lane, or we're going to pick a lane for him. He's going to go through and make a cut. And now when he makes the cut, this guy's going to disengage. But it's, it's a good question. Yeah. Anything else? All right, I hope, hope something's valuable. You can take something. Else.